fourth graders. My name is Mrs. Petrie and I teach fourth grade math and science at Farragut Intermediate School. Thank you for joining me today. I know that your teachers miss you very much, but I also know that they are so proud of you for taking the extra effort today to review important concepts from the school year. Today we will be reviewing food webs. The resources for today's lesson can be found at the Knox County Schools website under the Student Resources tab. However, if you do not have access to a printer, you can also choose to pick up the packets on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon. If this video is hard to understand, this slide has a few tips. You can turn on closed captions if available, Adjust the playback speed to slow down the video. Consider watching short clips, then pause, listen, and watch again. And lastly, ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk to your partner about what you heard and understood. I sometimes like to begin a math or science lesson with a joke, so I thought I'd share one with all of you today. What do you call it when your food holds hands? Got it? A food chain! <laughs> oh, I know. So funny. Well, today we are going to review components of a food chain and a food web. We are also going to review how energy flows through the ecosystem. You will know you're successful when you can create your own model of a food web. First, I want to introduce you to someone very special to me named Sue. I want you to close your eyes and visualize what you think Sue looks like. All right. Were you picturing a lady probably in her 60s, playing piano, like this lady? That's not Sue, that's my mom. This is Sue. Sue is a Tyrannosaurus rex and is one of the most famous fossils in the world. She is currently on display at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. T-Rex haven't lived on Earth for millions of years. Today, we are going to discover why that is. In order to find out that answer, we first need to review food chains and food webs. When we start investigating why dinosaurs no longer exist, we need to first think about what animals need to survive. I would like you to brainstorm just for a few seconds what you think an animal needs to survive. Did you think of air, water, shelter, and food? Food provides the animals with the energy they need to survive. Organisms obtain energy in different ways. An ecosystem consists of living organisms, such as plants and animals, and non-living organisms, like water, rocks, and sunlight. All living organisms need energy in order to live. Depending on how an organism gets its energy, it will be classified as a producer, consumer, or decomposer. Plants make up most of the world's producers. They are able to make their own food using photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process through which a plant uses sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make their own food. Consumers obtain their energy by eating plants and or animals. There are three types of consumers. Herbivores eat only plants. Deer and rabbits are examples of herbivores. Carnivores eat only animals. Lions, tigers, and some dinosaurs are carnivores. And then there are omnivores. They don't know what they want to eat. They want to eat plants, but they also want to eat animals. Bears, raccoons, and gorillas are omnivores. 
Decomposers obtain their energy by breaking down dead plants and animals into nutrients. The nutrients usually remain in the soil where they can be later used by other organisms. Mushrooms, worms, and bacteria are all examples of decomposers. Producers, consumers, and decomposers are all parts of a food chain. A food chain is a model that show us how energy and nutrients are passed from an organism to another in an ecosystem. Almost all food chains begin with the sun. The sun's energy is then passed to the producers. And in this case, that would be the grass. That energy is then passed to a consumer. And this food chain, the rabbit, which is an herbivore, is getting its energy from the grass. And then that energy may be passed to another consumer. And in this case, the coyote is getting its energy from the rabbit. All food chains end with decomposers. Food chain models always use arrows to show how the energy flows through the ecosystem. The arrows start at where the energy comes from and points to who gets the energy. For example, the rabbit is eaten by the coyote. So the energy or the arrow will start at the rabbit and then is pointed toward the coyote. The first step in creating your own food chain is to identify which organisms are the producers, consumers, and decomposers. And in this case, the earthworm is the decomposer, the plant is the producer, and the lion and the zebra are my consumers. The second step is to identify what is at the beginning and end of a food chain. We know that, all, that most food chains begin with the sun and then they will end with a decomposer. Then identify what each organism eats. Lastly, don't forget to add your arrows. The food chain begins with what? Yes, the sun. The plant uses the sunlight to produce its own food. The zebra eats the leaves to obtain its energy. Then the lion eats the zebra for its energy. After the lion has died, the earthworm will break down the nutrients and put them back into the soil. Now that we have mastered food chains, we are going to review food webs. Food webs show the overlap of food chains in an ecosystem. Food webs represent the flow of energy in many different food chains that are present at the same time in an ecosystem. Organisms may be part of multiple food chains. Now, let's take a look at this food web to learn more about the ecosystem. Some of the organisms may be a little difficult for you to see, so I might refer to them as their number. The first thing I like to do when I am looking at a food web is to determine what are the producers. So 1, 5, and 11 are my producers. I know this because if I follow their arrows back, they will go to the sun. So I know that they are getting their energy from the sun. Then I'm just going to choose one of my producers to look at and to see if I can determine some food chains. So if I look at number one, I can see that the giraffe is eating the leaves from this tree. And then I can see that the lion is eating the giraffe. This would be one food chain. However, I can see that the lion is also eating the rhinoceros. And the rhinoceros is eating leaves from the tree. So now I have another food chain. The lion is on the top of both of these food chains. If I go over here, I can identify many more food chains. If I look here, number five, and I just follow the arrows, I follow where the energy flows. So five, seven, eight, and 15, that would be another food chain. Five, seven, 12, 14 is another food chain. K 
Can you identify any more food chains? We can also tell whether an organism might be a carnivore, omnivore, or an herbivore by looking at a food web. For instance, if I look at number eight, it's a small bird, and I can use my background knowledge that most small birds eat berries or seeds, so that means that they eat plants. But this small bird is also eating an insect. So because it could eat animals and plants, I know that number eight is an omnivore. Now that we have reviewed food webs, it's your turn to make a food web from the time of the dinosaurs. You'll use the set of cards from the activity packet. They contain various animals from the Cretaceous period. Remember, this isn't a food chain you are going to make. You are making a food web. So you need to make sure that you connect animals to anything they eat, not just one thing. You can place the cards on a table and connect them with string, pieces of paper, or anything else you want. You can make a poster and glue the cards and draw the arrows with markers. You could also make the food web outside on your sidewalk using chalk. You could still use the cards or you could draw or just write the animal names with the chalk and then add the arrows. There are so many options and you can do whatever you prefer. I'm going to walk you through the steps on creating your food web. The first step is to cut the cards along the dotted line. Once you've done this, you need to read all of the cards and mark them as a carnivore, herbivore, omnivore, or decomposer. For example, let's read about the didelphodon and the duckbill dinosaur. The first thing I will do is read about its size. The didelphodon is 14 inches long. That's not very long. It's just a little bit more than a foot because I know that a ruler is 12 inches long. It says, I am a mammal. I get my energy by eating crickets, beetles, and worms. I have jaws that will crunch through turtle shell. I also eat berries if they're available. Since this animal eats crickets, which are animals, and berries, which are part of a plant, I know that it is an omnivore. So I would check off omnivore. Now let's read about the duckbill dinosaur. Its size is 32 feet long, so it is much bigger than the didelphodon. It says, I get my energy by eating twigs, leaves, and seeds from living plants. I always keep an eye out for T-Rex who thinks I make a good snack. So I just learned here that the T-Rex likes to eat duckbill dinosaur. But I also learned that the duckbill dinosaur is an herbivore because it only eats plants. Before you start your food web, here's a tip to help keep your cards organized. Take your carnivores and line them up largest to smallest. Then, Line up your herbivores, largest to smallest. Next to those, line up your omnivores. And then place your plants down at the bottom. Now that we have organized all of our cards, we can start creating our food web. So first, I want you to begin by placing the T-Rex at the top of your food web. Then, Place the living green plants card and dead plants and dead animals card at the bottom of your food web. Now it's time to decide what T-Rex ate. There are several possible answers. If you read the T-Rex card, you'll see that it eats triceratops and it eats duckbill dinosaurs. So you would connect both of those cards to the T-Rex. You'll have to think like a scientist though to decide about what else it could eat. The card says it also eats smaller animals, but which ones? It's not going to eat every animal it finds. Would it really waste its time eating a cricket or a mouse? It would have to eat a lot of crickets and a lot of mice to get enough energy. Once you've decided, use your paper strips markers, string, whatever you want, 
to connect the T-Rex to what you think it eats. Here is an example if you were making this outside with chalk. This is just two organisms T-Rex ate. There's more than that. Use your material to connect the rest of the animals with everything they eat. Don't forget to read the cards to help you. Let's read these two cards and see what they ate. The Triceratops is 30 feet long. It says, I get my energy by munching on living plants and I'm big, so I need a lot of food to keep going. That means a lot of plants. Good thing that palm trees grow so well around here. So I know that the Triceratops is an herbivore and eats plants. We already learned that the duckbill dinosaur also eats plants. So since they both eat plants, we will connect them to the plants card as well. This is what the food web will look like in the beginning. Remember, the T-Rex ate more than these two organisms, so you might have more cards over here that, that will connect to the T-Rex. Make sure to add arrows to show how each organism gets its energy. The arrows will point from food to the animal that eats it. Then you will need to connect the sun and the decomposers to the correct organisms too. This does not include all the organisms. I didn't want to give you all of the answers. So if I look over here and I see my sunlight card, I haven't connected it to the correct organism yet. You need to decide, does the T-Rex, duckbill dinosaur, or the living green plants use the sunlight to make its own food? Once you've made that decision, then you need to connect the sunlight card to the correct card over here. This is what yours might look like before adding arrows. This is what it might look like after adding arrows. After you have created your food web, we have one more important thing to discover. What happened to Sue? You have probably heard of a couple of theories of what caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. Many scientists believe that an asteroid was the cause. They have used evidence they have collected throughout many years to come up with this theory. At first, dinosaurs living in faraway parts of the world would have been safe because they would not have felt the impact. But very quickly, the sky would have been filled with burning ash and debris. As this asteroid dust moved through the atmosphere, it would have blocked out a lot of sunlight, leaving the ground cold and dark. Can you imagine? It would have stayed that way for a very long time because dust all over the world could not just blow away. With so little sunlight, Plants can't get as much energy from the sun, and most of them would wilt and die. Let's use this knowledge in our food web to see how Sue and her family became extinct. Once your food web is complete, you can model what happened when the asteroid hit the Earth. We know that the dust blocked out the sunlight plants need to grow. So let's cover the sunlight card. Uh-oh! Green plants need the sun to create their own food. Cover the plants now, too. Cover any organisms that eat only the green plants. Don't cover an organism if it eats dead plants, too. I only covered one, but there are many. Continue to cover each organism that is part of a green plant's food chain. Again, I only covered one, but there are more. Now you should be able to see why Sue and other T-Rex could not survive after the asteroid hit. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Which animals are uncovered? Do you recognize any of the names? Why was the T-Rex unable to survive? Why were some organisms able to survive and others were not? Well, boys and girls, we covered a lot today. 
I hope you have fun making your food webs. After this slide, I will include a possible solution for part two and part three. But remember, yours might look different than mine. If you want another challenge, research an ecosystem like the desert or savanna and make its food web. I would love to see your dinosaur food webs and any other food webs that you decide to make. I know your teachers would too. You can share a picture at the KCS Twitter handle. It's at KCS Science. Keep making observations and asking questions because that's what great scientists do. Bye.